Want to do it? Good, because yeah. I got something to say on this. Okay, perfect. Harrison Barnes was traded from the Mavs to the Kings last night in a three-player deal, and news of the trade came during the Mavs game against the Hornets. Barnes was forced to sit down the stretch, something LeBron addressed on the gram last night, saying there's a double standard with how the players and owners are viewed. Will? Yes. Does the NBA have a serious problem on their hands? No, the NBA does not have any problem. There's a LeBron James problem here. You know, this right here is the Mount Everest of hypocrisy, okay? You can't get any higher. This is the pinnacle. If you climb to the top of the mountain and you get to the top, you find this LeBron James Instagram post right here. This is it. No higher level of hypocrisy than this. LeBron James, as we speak, is trying to trade away the entire Los Angeles Lakers franchise. Everybody is on the block, and if he can get it done today, whether or not, if they had an 11 a.m. game and the Pelicans said, we're ready to do the AD deal, he'd say, fellas, off the court. AD's coming in. We know what's going on. And by the way, at the same time, he's trying to get his coach fired. So let's not pretend like this is like the little man against the big men. LeBron, you are the man. You're the man, and you would do this and have done this. You would trade any player, even close friends, move on from close friends and coaches to make your situation better. This is so much hypocrisy, you choke on it. And it's one more thing. It's fake news. It's absolutely irresponsible <laughs> fake news. If LeBron wants to do what we do and be a pundit and speak on situations going on around the league, then he needs to be informed. I'm sure there are situations where I've been wrong. But I do my best to be informed. LeBron here is telling you untruth. These are falsehoods. Harrison, no idea. Hold on, hold on, Max. Hold on. How are you hey. arriving at this conclusion? Listen to me. I was almost done. You would have got it. Harrison Barnes, according to his agent, and Paul Pierce mentioned it last night, Harrison Barnes knew the score. He knew what was up. He knew that he could potentially be traded, and it was in the works. He was asked, do you want to play anyway? And he said, I do. I want to play. LeBron suggests he was blindsided. LeBron put in his post, zero knowledge. That's not true, Max. But That's a lot. LeBron that's what fake LeBron, news. What is the big message to take out of what LeBron tweeted? I fail to see the hypocrisy here. What LeBron is talking about is the idea that players can be dealt whenever. And the team does that, and they do what's best for the team. This is his point, Will. This is like, come on, some reading comprehension. The, they do what's best for the team. And by the way, what he's saying is, players, we do what we make business decisions for ourselves, too. All he's pointing out is that there doesn't seem to be hue and cry about teams doing what's best for them, but there does seem to be hue and cry about players doing it. Now, you may disagree it's built with upon that. A lie. You, you have a lie. big... What's the lie? It's built upon the lie that the Mavericks were callous and did not tell Harrison Barnes and would do anything in their own self-interest to the detriment of their player. You and LeBron feel like you have a bigger point to make. You're right. building yes. it on a lie. Well, it's, it's not a... But okay, listen. LeBron saying that Harrison Barnes was blindsided may not be true, although when he became aware of it, if it was a couple here. days ago or whatever, or it was just since the Porzingis trade, that's where you're going along with your career, in one place, all of a sudden, there's a trade goes down, and a week later, you're gone? That happens pretty quickly, right? Maybe he had talks with a franchise that led him to believe that maybe he had a future there. He didn't. That's not the big takeaway here. It's of course not, right? Is, <laughs> right. The take, how could you read that LeBron post and not understand the takeaway is teams I don't do build what's truths of, I teams, don't build truths upon lies. It's easy. Teams, teams, it's like, okay. I'm sorry, I want to get Stephen Angier. Like this, Max, like when LeBron tweets about the NFL treating its players as commodities and that these owners don't care about their players and they'll trade them away, and then LeBron turns around and treats his own teammates and coaches in the same way, like that. But that's okay. That means that that means it LeBron's wasn't okay. For, it wasn't okay, okay with him when he when he indicted the NFL owners. LeBron is a now you're bringing in other information. You want to say that he went after the sure. NFL hypocritically? Okay, maybe. Well, but in this instance, LeBron's doing what's best for him. Another player does what's best for him. Teams do what's best for them. But what he's saying is mainly the players are criticized out of proportion. I would appreciate it if both of y'all would leave it to Stephen A. Smith, okay? I really, really, I, I really, really would. That would help y'all. It really would. This is really an example, and it's, and it's basically an illustration of the difference that the differences that exist now as opposed to before between team 
and player relations. The players are mega rich. They're driving their own decisions publicly and privately. We recognize that. This is why it's going to potentially be a serious problem for the National Basketball Association because y'all are both thinking about it in terms of the league, the NBA, the brand, and the fact that it's in a good place. I know that's you, what you were thinking in terms of you, Will, is about the hypocrisy of LeBron James. I'm saying no, it's not about either. What this is about there's a whole bunch of small market teams that are outside of New York, that are outside of L.A., a cadre of individual owners who are going to raise holy hell. And this is the kind of stuff that's going to come down the pike. You cannot, if you are the National Basketball Association, even though the sport was built on the backs of popular players like Jordan and Magic and Bird before that, Isaiah Thomas in between, Kobe and Shaq later on, et cetera, et cetera. When you have a situation, and you're talking about big time money, when you have a situation where players who are under contract are still in a position to manipulate things and speak up on behalf of themselves or what have you, all I'm saying is from a league relation perspective, in terms of the kind of things that they want to get done down the line, even though those marquee players ain't going to suffer, the middle of the road players are going to be made to suffer just so an example can be established that we but, are the league and the players will not run. That's a good point. Inside. But the whole problem doesn't occur until five and a half years into a guy's career. He has no choice where he played if he wants to keep even most of the money. After five and a half years, players are going to start Please to subscribe to Rambo Jump TV. I mean, like, oh, what's the problem? The problem is, is that you have a bevy of players who are in the mix and who are close to that five years. It's so it's on so my new videos. The the climate, put their time I, 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 no, 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 I'm saying the climate now is such that a lot of players are going they to be causing yeah, yeah, yeah. the problem. For, for, what, for what it's like, worth, when Dan was on, he brought up the same point, that Harrison yeah. Barnes was aware that this was going to happen. Right. Yeah. It's important. It's because it's, it's the facts behind the story. It's important. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you know what's important? That yeah. we can listen to the Will Cain Show 3 to 6 